Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. So this video will be basically the total opposite of my most recent previous video, which was me kind of showcasing some of the most popular perfumes out there that in my opinion, I do think are worth the popularity and are worth the buy. And today I'm going to show you 10 really popular, once again, perfumes, but that in my opinion, I don't think are worth the hype. Now, please do not take offense to this video. I'm sure throughout this entire video, I will probably mention a perfume that maybe you like or even love maybe it's your signature perfume you get compliments all the time and you just love how it smells obviously perfumes work differently on each person so me bashing these perfumes doesn't dictate anything about how they smell on you so definitely take this video with a grain of salt i feel like i'm mainly making this video just because these are pretty higher up their perfumes so if you have the same type of perfume taste as i do then maybe this video may kind of make you rethink your choice of getting these or maybe you can go and test them out instead of blind buying them in case you're like contemplating but i will tell you of course like the reasoning behind why i don't think that they are worth the hype also another little Little disclaimers that some of these I don't even think that they smell bad like I actually think a good majority of these perfumes smell really really good but I have my own little uh, distinct reasonings behind why I don't think that they're necessarily worth the money especially for how much they cost when a perfume is a little bit more higher up there I expect a lot more from it anyways with all that being said before we get into this video please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on and let's get started so the very first perfume i'm going to talk about is one that i really wished that i loved and i was so excited when it came out but ultimately i was really disappointed this is like straight up i don't think it's worth the hype i do not like the scent of it and i'll let you guys know why so this perfume is carolina herrera a very good girl Definitely not to be confused with any of these. I have the original Good Girl here, which you guys know I talk about it all the time. I love, I love Good Girl Supreme, but Very Good Girl, I straight up dislike because as soon as I smelled that perfume, I was so taken aback by how screechy it was. There was something so pungent and like sour in it. It almost smelled like a perfume that had gone bad. I'm pretty sure that maybe that's just to my nose. I know that that's not the experience with everyone because I do feel like a lot of people really, really love that scent when it came out. Hence why it's in this video. Hence why it's so popular. But there is just something that I do not like. I think it might be just the combination of the lychee and the rose and the vetiver. It just has like this really, really strange sour kick to it. It's kind of too earthy in my opinion the rose is too pronounced the lychee mixture it's just it's just too much for my nose it does kind of resemble delina for me i've never smelled the original delina i do have dupes of delina and while i don't think that i hate it that is another scent that i don't think is necessarily worth the price just in my opinion i know how loved delina is but I personally would not spend the money on it. And Very Good Girl kind of reminded me of it. They both have lychee, so it's like that same really pungent sour kick that I can't really put my finger on, but it just does not, I guess, work with my nose. And that takes me straight to the second perfume that I'm going to talk about, which is the most recent release by Carolina Herrera. Another flanker to Good Girl. In fact, I think it's a flanker to Very Good Girl, and that is Very Good Girl Glam. So, I again, I was really excited about this one. I always get really excited whenever there's a flanker for Good Girl because I have such a huge love for it. Looking at the notes, I was a little bit more excited, and I thought that I would enjoy it a lot more than Very Good Girl. And while I do, like, I don't hate it to the extent that I hate Very Good Girl, it still has that pungent kick to it. I don't know if it's because they both share that similar type of rose in there along with the vetiver, but something in it, again, just does not work for me. It just, it's too sour and too punchy for my nose. It literally like hits me in the face. It's kind of one of those fragrances where you smell it and almost gives you like a sore throat. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work with me. I was excited for it because this one, unlike the other ones, is kind of like a sour cherry take on the Good Girl fragrances. And I love cherry perfumes. But this one, just in conjunction with the other notes, it just didn't work for me. It also has bitter almond, so I feel like the mixture of like super sour and then the bitterness, it was too much for my nose. It was one of those fragrances where you smell and you're like, ugh. 
again, to me, it smelled like a fragrance gone bad. I feel really bad to say that, but it's the truth. It's what I smelled. If you love those fragrances, obviously more power to you that that's great. I wish I loved them and I wish that they worked for me, but they didn't. Yeah, another very famous perfume, we have Vanilla 28 by Kayali. I have talked about this previously on my channel. When I first had it before I returned it, I was trying so hard for like a week to love it. Like I was trying so, 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 so hard. I was wearing it. I was telling everybody about their opinions on it. And I feel like everyone around me had kind of the same opinions that I did. Now, after I kind of came out talking about this fragrance and talking about how I didn't like it, a lot of you also came to tell me that you felt the same way about it. I kind of said that it kind of reminded me of like an old church smell and I still stand by that. That's what it smells like to me. It's a vanilla, but it's a really, really strange, very mature vanilla to me. I personally do not find it sexy. The notes in it are good. Like you get vanilla orchid, jasmine, you get middle notes of brown sugar and tonka, amber. It's a little musky. I found that again, it was a little too musky for me though. And there's actually no real vanilla note. So I think it's like, the mixture between the vanilla orchid, the brown sugar, and the tonka bean that is kind of supposed to emulate a vanilla note, but I just don't think that it works. And then the patchouli also just mixes really weird. It's like, it's trying to be warm and sweet, but then that patchouli kind of makes those notes a little screechy because it gives them kind of an earthy kick. And I have perfumes that have similar notes to these that do work and I do really enjoy, but there's something in the composition of this perfume that did not work for me at all. I would never see myself repurchasing this perfume. Like that is just like one and done. I don't think I will ever go back to it. If you love Vanilla 28, again, I hear so many people tell me that it's like their most complimented perfume. They love it. It smells so delicious to them. And I even had people come at me when I said that I didn't like it, which I knew that that would happen because it is such a popular fragrance. So when so many people like a fragrance and you say you don't like it, they're like, oh, but you gotta smell it again. No, I don't like it. And that's like point blank period. I do not like it. Along the same lines of a very popular perfume that I'm pretty sure I've been attacked on talking about this perfume in the past. Like people will be like, no, like clearly your nose doesn't work. This perfume is so good. You clearly don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't care. This is La Vie Belle by Lancome. I don't by any means think that La Vie Belle smells bad, but I just feel like so many perfumes smell like La Vie Belle. I just don't see any uniqueness in it like whatsoever. It's a nice scent, it's sweet, but it's almost a little too sweet for me, which I know is crazy coming out of my mouth because I love sweet scents. Like I'm all about the gourmands and my favorite fragrances are sweet fragrances, but this is just one that I do not like. Like there's praline in it, there's vanilla, like pretty notes. But again, the mixture of those two with the patchouli, it just kind of, it's just a little too pungent uh, for my nose and I do not like it. There's a lot of scents that smell like La Vie Belle and honestly, a lot of scents that I feel like I could recommend over La Vie Belle. Like if you like the scent of La Vie Belle, but you want something that's a little bit more elevated and you're not gonna necessarily smell like everyone else i feel like there's a lot of fragrances like that let me know if you guys would be interested in me doing a video where i kind of talk about one perfume that maybe i don't like that you could try a better alternative to let me know if you guys would be interested in a video like that because la vie Belle would definitely be included in that list because it's one of those perfumes that i could very much easily recommend an alternative that's so much better for um that doesn't smell so like basic. Another pretty new fragrance that I have smelled and I'm definitely not purchasing because I do not like it at all and that is the brand new Burberry Her Eau de Toilette. So Burberry Her EDT is obviously a flanker or not really a flanker but just the Eau de Toilette version of the Eau de Parfum Burberry Her and again this was a perfume that I had high hopes for because I really enjoy Burberry Blah, that's like a tongue twister. I really enjoy Burberry Her. I've recommended it a lot and I really, really like it. It's a really pretty, very juicy, berry-like scent, but with kind of like that Baccarat rouge vibe to it. It's really uplifting and it's a beautiful like spring and summer scent, very easy to wear. Now, 
Burberry Hurt EDT, I went into the store and I smelled it when it had just come out. And judging by the green bottle and the green juice, I was expecting maybe just a lighter version of the Eau de Parfum, something that would kind of smell similar. For some reason, it looked like it would be like a apple, like a sour apple version of Burberry Her, just because Burberry Her is kind of like a light pink bottle. And then this one was like light green. So I kind of went into it without even reading the notes, thinking that it would be like, maybe like an apple version of it, which I would have loved, but that was not the case at all. I was so taken aback when I smelled it because the first perfume that came to mind was Carolina Herrera, Very Good Girl, which is the perfume that I talked about in the beginning of this video that I do not like because of that really sour, screechy element that it has. And I was not expecting the Eau de Toilette version of the Eau de Parfum Burberry Her to be screechy or loud. I was just expecting it to be like a soft, fresh fragrance, but something in it just did not work for me. Again, I think that this one, similar to Very Good Girl, reminds me of the scent that is in Delina. It's kind of like the screechy lychee mixed with the rose type of scent. Even though there's no lychee in this one, there's something in it, again, that kind of scent that smells like it's just sour or perfume gone bad. I was smelling it again. Like I'm starting to think that I have like an aversion to these types of scents. I'm not really sure because at first I thought that it was lychee that would kind of do that to me. I kind of just deemed lychee to be kind of one of those scents that was really screechy for my nose and too sour and just too punchy. But this one doesn't have lychee yet it gives me that lychee smell that is in Delina or Very Good Girl. It was too floral smelling. It kind of reminds me of something that Chanel would come out with, like that really distinct patchouli heavy mature vibe. Personally, I don't like that. So yeah, the Eau de Toilette Burberry Her is a big, big no for me. And it also lacks a lot of the sweetness that the EDP has. Like there's no berries in this one, but just like a weird, really, really heavy, honeysuckle rose musky scent it does not fit with the scent that is in the eau de parfum like at all the next scent that i have here well that i don't have here obviously because i don't like it and i wouldn't recommend it that is the miss dior rose and roses a lot of miss dior perfumes are really hyped up and very popular and i do own one of them which is right here um, I own Absolutely Blooming. I was really scared to go into the Miss Dior's because they all are very prominent on that rose vibe, very floral scents, but Absolutely Blooming, I feel like is one of the sweetest out of all of them. And it kind of even reminds me a little bit of Giorgio Armani C. It's kind of fresh, it's very sweet, it's floral. It's like a little bit of everything in a good amount, but Rose and Roses, which I should have known obviously, but I just want to like reiterate in this video in case you were looking forward to the scent. When I was doing some research on Rose and Roses, people were saying that even though they didn't like Rose scents, that they really liked Rose and Roses. So that's what made me want to explore it. And then once I smelled it and I wore it, I was, I was like, no, like this is way too much Rose. Again, in like that mature way that I personally don't, enjoy rose scents to be so you get a lot of rose it's like a musky rosy scent in rose and roses and if you are into like that really heavy floral rose musky mature vibe then you will love rose and roses or maybe even just try it out for yourself maybe you might like it more than i do but in my opinion i did not think that they, it was that worth the hype i guess it just has a really really big emphasis on that rose note which Obviously, I understand. So it's not like it deceives you in any way because it's literally called Rose and Roses. But I feel like in the way that a lot of people made it sound, I was expecting it to be a little bit more fresh and uplifting, more of like an aquatic rose, not something that smelled really synthetic. And that's personally what I got from it. So that's a no for me. So the next couple scents I do actually have and I'm contemplating on what to do with them. I don't know if I want to sell them or keep them. I'm just like still in this kind of like gray area with them. But I do for sure know that I don't think that they are worth the hype that they get. The first one, I feel so bad to say because I tried to love this for such a long time and I'm such a huge fan of the bottle. Like this bottle is giving me everything. I love 
love this bottle and this is pure excess by Paco Rabanne what throws me off about this perfume is basically like the unique factor that this perfume has and that is that this has a popcorn note and I knew that going into it so it's not like I was like betrayed by it this was a blind buy but I was expecting it to be a lot more sweet and I was expecting the popcorn note to really die down but it never really does for me and it just gives me like this really weird popcorn scent it's almost like nutty or even almondy but not in a good way almost in like a bitter way there's sweetness to this for sure and that's kind of why i'm contemplating on what i want to do with it because this is not a hate of a fragrance i just don't think that this is worth the hype i may change my mind on that like if i could go back in time and figure out whether i wanted to get this or not now knowing what it smells like i wouldn't i would not purchase this for the sheer fact that it's so weird it's a weird fragrance definitely has a unique factor to it because i don't think there's many perfumes out there that have a note of popcorn it almost gives me like pee smell like it almost smells like like pee to me i'm kind of just in this really weird area with this fragrance where i don't know what i want to do with it maybe i'll try it out a little bit more but i just feel like every time i put it on ultimately i'm always like oh like that smells like like literal urine i would not recommend it i definitely don't think it's worth the hype but i'm gonna have to see what i'm gonna do with it the next perfume that i also have here which is also kind of like a gray area perfume at the moment and that is giorgio armani c passione this is a flanker to giorgio armani c which i love this definitely smells a lot different than giorgio armani c this one is basically kind of like a lighter version of giorgio armani c but without a heavy patchouli scent there's still a patchouli note in here but it's not really that prominent in here now i feel like for this red color and just the bottle it's not giving me like the wow factor that i would expect do not get me wrong with this fragrance i think this smells amazing but i have a huge but of this fragrance and why i do not recommend it and why i don't think it's worth the hype and that is the lasting power of this perfume i don't always put that much emphasis on lasting power in perfumes because i personally don't really mind over spraying or reapplying throughout the day but with this perfume i this is probably like my least lasting perfume like it just does not stick to me no matter what i do after a literal two minutes has gone by this is gone like completely gone i cannot smell a trace of it i wish it lasted because it is a really good smell but i also don't think it's worth the hype because it's a good smell yes it just has like a nice perfumey smell to it. It does kind of have a sexy, very feminine vibe. It's a little bit sweet. It's kind of fruity. Overall, it's really good. But it's just not wowing me. And especially for a fragrance that's more higher up there, like a Giorgio Armani perfume would be, I would expect lasting power and performance and all of that to be there. And it's not in here. So for that reason is why I'm not going to say that this is necessarily worth the hype that it has because it just doesn't really live up to expectations of a perfume that is like over a hundred dollars the last perfume i have for this video is one that i can see my mom throwing pitchforks through the screen because she will literally kill me after i uh, talk about this perfume because this is one of her signature scent for life like my mom always said that my dad loved this on her like it was like my dad's favorite perfume on her and coco mademoiselle by chanel I don't think this is worth the hype. I don't think that, again, this is a bad fragrance, but it's a little bit too mature and sophisticated for me. I definitely do think that there's a time and a place to wear this, and I don't think it's a bad scent, and especially for a Chanel scent. I, Chanel scents are always really mature and a little too sophisticated and just, like, serious for me. I like more like playful sexy perfumes and chanel is just one of those houses that has more like sophisticated elegant perfumes and i guess i'm just not an elegant person because a lot of them i don't like this one is a little bit easier on the nose in comparison to the other perfumes that they have but i just don't think that it's worth the hype it's a really really heavy screechy patchouli scent there's a lot of like citruses in the opening it's like a citrus patchouli with a lot of like florals in it. I think Ylang Ylang 
is what's doing that for me because similar to what I said about this one, uh, Pure Excess, which these do not have any similarities within them, so I'm not talking in comparison here, but this one also has a Ylang Ylang note, and I just feel like Ylang Ylang, I don't know if it's just me, but Ylang Ylang really comes off as like a pee smell. I feel bad talking badly about this because every time I do smell it, it reminds me of my mom and I feel like that sounds so bad. Like I just literally said that this smells like urine and now I'm saying it smells like my mom. It's a good perfume. It smells really good. It's just, I just don't think it's worth the hype. And that's really all it is. I probably will keep this in my collection for a little bit longer because I don't know why, but I feel like I have a really hard time letting go of this perfume. I'm not sure because there's so many like memories attached to it. Um, I feel like I've almost like grown on that perfume because my mom has worn it for years But I feel like for that reason is why I don't really wear it because I have smelled it for so long that I just never reach for that on top of like any of my other perfumes that I re usually reach for so yeah, that is my take on Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. I just don't think that it's that worth it but i do have a really nice alternative to it which i can let you guys know in that alternative video uh, that i might do so let me know if you guys would be interested in that right, video. so that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i know you all really love whenever i do perfumes that i don't like i feel like people love perfumes that i hate videos or perfumes i don't recommend or perfumes that are just not good because a lot of people are kind of looking for ways to stop spending money and doing a video like this is kind of a good way to do that so that if you had your eye on these perfumes, maybe this will kind of like put a pause to it. Anyways, let me know in the comments which perfumes you hate. They could be perfumes that I love. They could be perfumes that others love. Obviously, we all have different tastes, but I'm really interested in seeing which ones you guys just do not like. If you've had any like really bad experiences with perfumes or like people have come up and told you like this perfume smells so bad. Let me know. That is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.